Hello, this is Claire and Bobby from Live in the Vineyard. And we're here today at the amazing Spring Mountain Vineyard with Valley Farrell, who's the Director of Public Relations, who's going to take us through a few of the winery's flagship wines and tell us a little bit about Spring Mountain Vineyard and the history. We're standing in the most amazing and incredible mansion, which I believe is called we call it Villa Miravalle. It's amazing yes. and beautiful. beautiful. Yes, it dates to 1885, and it's actually named for um, Miravalle means view of the valley. So if we were to walk out the front door here and look out, we would see a lovely, a lovely view of vineyard, of course, and, and the Napa Valley, which is where we are. Well, the Spring Mountain District is a very unique and special part of Napa, and as Bobby and I are finding out as we learn more about wines and learn more about the wineries here. Um, there's a lot of unique footprints and, and characteristics to Spring Mountain and to this particular vineyard. So we wanted you to tell us a little bit about that. And mm -hmm. What makes us different? What Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're fortunate not enough to be within the Napa Valley, which is, of course, one of the best wine growing regions in, in the world. Um, there are actually 14 little sub-appellations or ABAs within Napa Valley and Spring Mountain District is one of them. Mm -hmm. And the reason, what makes us different, and, and I should say that Spring Mountain Vineyard has 845 acres of land footprint, mm -hmm. uh, 225 acres of vines, which it actually represents almost 25% of all the planted acres within our little sub-appellation of Spring Mountain District. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we feel a little qualified to talk about how grapes grow here and right. what we think grows best here. Um, the vineyard um, dates to the late 19th century. Um, we actually inherited a land footprint of vineyard that um, that still exists today. Not the same vines, of course, mm -hmm. but um, you know the people who came here from Europe, uh, the Germans, the French who came and first established the vineyards here, um, went to the hillsides because in their countries that was kind of where you put you put vines. You put everything that could grow on fertile ground, your vineyard, you know, your vegetable mm -hmm. garden on the flatlands and you put your vines on the hillside, so that's where they went. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, are the beneficiaries of, of their hard work. We though have looked at our vineyards uh, over the last, you know, 15 years and using weather stations and modern technology, examining soils and microclimates within our vineyard here um, to determine what grows best where. 85% mm -hmm. um, of what we have planted at Spring Mountain Vineyard is, um, are the red Bordeaux varieties. And um, the, those are basically Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Cabernet Franc. We have a little bit of Malbec planted. And then we have actually a white Bordeaux variety, which is a Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. So um, we're fairly specific about what we make. It, as I said, 85% of what we do is based in these two wines, a Cabernet Sauvignon and Elie Vette, which is our, our signature wine. It's a Bordeaux. Both of them have those grape varieties blended into them with different expressions uh, mm -hmm. in the bottle. And then the Sauvignon Blanc is our, our I shouldn't say token white wine because it's never Amazing. token. It's a, it's a really nice white it wine. It is a really is, nice um, white wine. And so we spend a lot of time uh, with that wine. Uh, it's, it really does express the vineyard. Our vineyard goes from 400 feet of elevation, which is about where we're standing right now in the Victorian, mm -hmm. up to 1,600 feet. And we've got two Sauvignon Blanc vineyards, one that's at about you know five to 800 feet of elevation that's right behind us. Mm -hmm. And then another that's at about 1,100 feet. So we get really different expressions of how the grapes grow at those different elevations, which makes for um, a nice complexity in the wine, a nice minerality uh, from our upper elevations, that great crisp acidity that um, makes a white wine refreshing. And then some of that nice stone fruit, citrus fruits that blends into it too. And we, yeah. Um, I think for a lot of people who want to know what this vineyard is like, um, it's very romantic and very unusual in beautiful plantings. There are flowers everywhere. There's incredible olive trees and gardens and eucalyptus trees and, you know, what is sort of the evolution of this incredible vineyard? Because it's different than a lot of the other vineyards that we've been to. Um, there just seems to be that history, I guess, of the, you know, the age of the original development of it. But the gardens are important here, aren't they? They're very important. They're important to our owner. It's, it's actually fairly similar to think that the person that founded this estate back in 1885, who planted you know, thousands of olive trees and had hundreds of different kinds of roses here, grapes, planted his own tobacco to make his own cigars. 
in a way is relatively is sort of similar to our owner now, who mm -hmm. loves beautiful things, uh, very much um, loves things that grow, um, doesn't ever want to hurt a bug or a fly or a bee or anything, which, which is fairly challenging here when you're trying mm -hmm. to, to manage this kind of a vineyard. Right. But yeah, so I think that love of beauty uh, is definitely part, part of what pleases him. And we always like to think that, you know, we, I'm happy that you enjoy the beauty that's around here. And we're, we get so spoiled, we kind of get maybe a little jaded about it. But um, we like to say, you know, we can, we can capture the beauty that's here in the vineyard, in the gardens. And, you know, because not everyone can visit here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if we can capture a little bit of that or a lot of that in our wines, then, then you know, we feel like we've done a really good job. Um, well, I think one of the things that Bobby and I have noticed coming here and getting to be familiar with yourself, with some of the wines, mm -hmm. is that the wines are of incredible caliber and they're very unique uh, in their body, in their flavor. They don't taste to, to my taste, Bobby, I don't know, they don't taste like any other wine from any other vineyard. And they, your Pinot Noir, your co-ferment co Syrah, Syrah, which we love. <laughs> like, we love the We're all about the co-ferment Syrah, which you should have a chance to check out. Yeah. Um, and those wines are, they're very elegant and they're very special, but, you can but we can drink them. We, we drink these wines everywhere. We have had them at home. We've introduced a lot of our friends to them. And we find that uh, they are very, you know, I don't know, Bobby, what word would you use? I mean, you can drink them anywhere. There's not a special word for that, by the way. <laughs> they're accessible. accessible. They're versatile. Accessible, accessible to everything. Yeah. They're not snobby, they're not stuck up, and they taste amazing. But they are elegant, beautiful, and amazing wines. Mm, and, thank you uh, for saying that. A wine connoisseur or a person that's first tasting wine would appreciate it equally. They would just both love I think some of that has to do with where they grow. Everything, because we're in a state concept here. Everything is about the dirt, from the dirt to the right. glass that we're holding, because we do everything. We right. don't buy any grapes, we, you know, we don't buy any wine, we make it all here, and so... Is that what estate bottled means? Does yes. it mean that all of the grapes come from the property yes, in and it of does. itself? Okay. It does, and you make all the wine on, at the estate, on the property, you do all this, you know, you, the wine making is done, the bottling is done, everything. Mm -hmm. and, and for, you know, for people that um, tend, as people explore wine and what they like in wine, I mean, they may love wines from this, this particular part of Napa Valley, whether mm -hmm. it's Spring Mountain Vineyard or somebody else here in the mountain. But if, once they discover what they like, uh, even if, you know, it's just a little thing, oh, I like that kind of cherry chocolate thing that the wine has got into it. Mm -hmm. um, I like the fact that um, the tannins aren't really, aren't really harsh, right. that they're softer. This is all part of the MO of the Spring Mountain District. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing here, we get wines that are really deep in color, as you can see here from the O5 Valley Vet. Um, they're really deep in color. We get a lot of fruit concentration because they're growing on really difficult mm -hmm. steep hillsides. The, the, the clusters are smaller, the berries within the clusters are smaller, so we get a lot more color extracted mm -hmm. into the wines. Um, and of course, it's, our winemaker can speak about this, but you know you certainly don't want to extract too much from mountain-grown fruit mm -hmm. too, because then you end up with a monster. So mm -hmm. we're always looking for grace in the wines. So that nice fruit, that nice crisp acidity that gives a red wine life mm -hmm. and longevity. That's another typical thing about wines from Spring Mountain Vineyard is that they're long, you know, they have they're long-lived. Um, and then the tannins are just a little softer, they're more supple, chewy, sometimes our winemaker calls them chewy. Mm -hmm. um, I think that makes makes them accessible, and what you were trying to address there was that, yeah, I can I can drink those, they're, not, they're, they're mm -hmm. ready to go, but, but... But they can also age well. Mm -hmm. They age And they really have well. a long life, yeah. This 2005 Valley Vet, which actually will be released in the middle of September, you're getting a little sneak preview here, because um, <gasps> you're my friends. <laughs> <laughs> And, and this uh, is a really good part of the job, by the way. Right, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. The, the fun part about, about the wine business or the music business or any of it, isn't it? It's all about people. Mm -hmm. It's all about the friendships that you make and you know, certainly having a wonderful wine um, to taste and be with friends is, is what it's about, too. Well, and that's yes. something that we are trying to do with this event is introduce all of you to new music, to new wines, to food, to all of the sort of things. We talk about our event being a pairing, an intimate pairing of music, wine, and food, and we invite all of you to 
come into Spring Mountain Vineyard, discover their wines. Uh, you have a website, I believe? We do have a website, springmountainvineyard.com. Okay. And you have an amazing wine club. We do have a wine club that is it's relatively small. Our production mm -hmm. is small. It's about 8,000 cases per year. Mm -hmm. But um, we do a lot of fun things with our, our wine club members. Tomorrow we're taking them to a Giants-Dodgers game at AT&T AT AT Park in San Francisco. So there will be, there actually will be a little of O5 Ellie that has spilled, oh. consumed. And